Have you ever wondered how Spotify can stream high quality music using less data than ever before? Or how multimodal AI models can compress different types of sounds while preserving the qualities of the original audio? The secret lies in a technique called residual vector quantization, or RVQ. This powerful method is revolutionizing how we store and transmit audio and it's at the heart of cutting-edge AI models like Google's Soundstream and Meta's Encodec. In this video, we'll break down how neural compression and RVQ work and how AI-inspired approaches based on learnable codecs might eventually replace traditional codecs like MP3, de facto reshaping the future of video and audio compression. Before we dive in, let's understand why audio compression is so important. Did you know that over 80% of internet traffic today comes from streaming audio and video? That's a massive amount of data being transferred every single second. Traditional compression methods like MP3 work by removing parts of the audio that humans supposedly can't hear. While this works pretty well, it's a one-size-fits-all approach that can sometimes lead to noticeable quality loss. Also, a fixed algorithmic approach might work well for specific kinds of sounds, like MP3, which is optimized for music, but can struggle with other types of sounds. Neural network-based methods, however, offer the flexibility to adapt dynamically to diverse audio types, preserving quality across different contexts. And this is where neural compression takes a fundamentally different approach. Instead of following fixed rules about what humans can and can't hear, it learns patterns directly from the data and can compress audio in a way that preserves what matters most to human perception. And what's really exciting is that when these models are combined with iterative denoising or diffusion models for upscaling resolution or other super resolution techniques inspired by the computer vision domain, they can recreate data with extremely high faithfulness to the original. In practice, this might lead us to new and flexible near lossless compression techniques. Let's start with the basics of how neural audio compression works. Imagine you're trying to compress a few seconds of audio data. Here's what happens. First, an encoder neural network converts the audio waveform into a sequence of vectors. Think of these as equivalent to DNA sequences that capture the essential characteristics or features of the sound. But there's a problem here. The audio encoder is producing vectors in a continuous process. So these vectors can take any combination of real numbers. In order to efficiently transmit these vectors to the decoder, we need to replace them with closed vectors from a fixed finite set a process called vector quantization. This finite set of reference vectors is called a codebook, essentially a lookup table. The idea is that instead of transmitting the original high dimensional vectors, we can just send a single integer number, the index of the closest matching vector in the codebook. Sounds quite simple, right? But here's the catch. Bitrate refers to the amount of data used to encode the audio per second. Now, this strategy of replacing encoded vectors with their neighboring codeboot vectors Works well in theory, but in practice we have a problem as we want to increase the bitrate. For example, at a very low bitrate like 1 kilobits per second, this approach can work fine. But as the bitrate goes up, say to 3 kilobits per second, and the encoder is producing say 100 vectors per second, we would need a giant codebook with more than a billion unique vectors to present all the possible values. And that's just infeasible in practice. So this is where traditional vector quantization hits a wall and where residual vector quantization comes in. RVQ solves this problem with a simple insight. Instead of compressing everything at once, why not do it in stages? This might remind you of how deep neural networks process images, a discovery that revolutionized computer vision around a decade ago. Researchers found that these networks naturally organize visual information across their layers. Early layers detect basic features like edges and colors, middle layers combine these into more complex patterns, and deeper layers recognize high-level features like faces or objects. But back to RVQ. The idea is to replace traditional vector quantization with a multi-layered approach. So we let the feature vectors be processed over several quantization layers. The first layer quantizes the vectors with moderate resolution, and each subsequent layer processes the residual error from the previous one, which is done by taking vector difference. By splitting the quantization process across multiple layers, the required codebook size can be reduced drastically. In our previous example, just having five quantization layers in our RVQ component reduces the codebook size from over 1 billion down to just 320. The beauty of this structure is that each layer only needs to handle a portion of the signal, making the whole process much more efficient than trying to capture everything at once with a single codebook. Neural compression methods based on residual vector quantization are revolutionizing audio and video codecs. Quantization techniques like RVQ have become essential to text-to-speech and text-to-music generators, for example. And if you're interested in how we deal with model latency when managing large audio files for our API, 
Check out Ryan's blog post linked in the description to learn how we can process and transcribe a three-hour podcast in roughly 100 seconds with our models. Also, if you're looking to get hands-on with generative AI, check out Smitha's tutorial where she shows you how to create text-to-video applications in Python. It's a great starting point if you want to build something cool with these technologies. And I'll see you in the next videos. And this model essentially converts text to video using a diffusion model. I'm going to explain how this model works, but before that, let's actually jump into Google Colab and download this model to start running it.